Okay, so to continue and breaking this up a little bit more, something I always like to try first with uh, lines to really break them up is I uh, like to add a dynamic gradient, something like this. And then for the top, I want to pick like a wood grain and we have a few ones in here. So I think we are calling them directional noise. So I probably, I think noise number two should be fine. Yeah, although we might want to use a levels on this to just change it around a bit. Anyway, let's start with noise two and just set the angle to be down here, uh, 90 degrees. There we go. And just plug this in here just to get a start. So as you can see, that really changes things uh, quite a bit where it makes everything a bit stronger. But yeah, as I said, I need to play around with the levels a little bit more, probably just to lower this effect. Because right now it is just completely breaking our actual um, warps and everything. But like this, you can, you can already get like some nice tweaks and everything in here. Hmm, but I, I don't think this is the right noise for us. I think we want to pick a different one. So let's have a look because I can't remember there being different, more no different noises in here. I swear it was called something with wood. Let's type in wood. Really? Uh, they might have just removed the noise that I always use, which is kind of a pain, to be honest. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the legacy um, texture from from um, from Substance Share and then give it to you guys because it used to be in Substance, but of course with all the updates and everything, they, I, I think they just removed it. So let me just get that. Okay, so yeah, it ended up being a legacy uh, texture that they removed. So I just got from Substance Share and I placed it into our texture folders and I called it Wood Fibers and I just imported it. So here we go. So this is the one I was talking about. As you can see, it is similar to this one, but it's uh, quite a bit softer and everything. So yeah, I think it is actually really close to this one. We could have actually achieved it with levels, but I just, because this one was already perfect, I like it like this. So the resize method, we can just keep to smooth. Actually, we do not need to change anything. And we can just probably plug this in here. And this is more what we are looking for. So make sure that the gradient orientation is to vertical because vertical often gives us a bit of a better result. Although, you know what, horizontal is actually quite nice also. Let's see, vertical versus horizontal. You know what, I think we want to have a bit of a rougher look because we have all these fibers and everything. So we might just want to go for uh, horizontal. So like this as you can as you can see over here it, uh, it always gives like a really harsh effect around where the warping starts and which is of course not something that we want to get so what we can try is we can try to give it a little bit of a motion blur so i'm just going to add a oh wait so yeah it's not a motion blur it's blur directional where are you It's like they changed everything. It's been just before this tutorial, I only updated to one extra version for you guys. So it's weird that they got rid of that. Let's try non-uniform blur. Yeah, I think this. I think they replaced it with this one. So I want to plug this in here. Let's set the angle up, intensity up. And we probably looks like that we need to plug in a blur map. So let's see what happens when we actually do just like a purling noise. Ooh, that's quite a bit stronger. But um, it, it, it does work to an extent. We just need to change things up a little bit. So let's instead give for the blur map something like our very first lines or... Hmm, let's see which one will work. I just don't want to lose too much of like the strong detail, so I might want to just lower this. Yeah, I think if we set this to 0 0.8, that would actually work good enough. And now don't worry, we are now going to blend between like the sharp and the soft one a little bit. So if we add a blend node to this, 
Um, we do want to have for the software, we probably want to give it a little bit of a blur, but it's a lot lower. So I'm just, for this one, I'm going to set the intensity to be like 0 0.3, something like that. Just to give it like, that it's not as sharp, so that it still has like a little bit of smoothness to it. I want to set this one to the background and to the foreground, I want to set our more stronger blur. And then if we add a levels, and in this one, before this one, to add a blend because we need to blend both of our, both of our, uh, over here, our blurs and everything. So I'm just going to blend these two levels over here, which has all our knobs in it. Now, having that done, I want to add one levels, move it all the way up, add another blur to make it all smooth again. So let's set the quality to one. And let's just make it quite a bit smooth. And we can already try this out, see how this looks. So we might want to just make this a little bit stronger by adding some more levels to this. Yeah, here we go. And just make it like a little bit stronger. And um, of course, very close, you can see some artifacts, but once when we are done with this, you will not be able to notice anything to this. Um, it looks like I am missing one of them. It's probably this one that we end up changing around. So I might just want to, is it? Yeah, yeah. So let's add another blur, another blend to this and just plug in over here this one and see. Did that get everything? Yeah, I think that got everything. So that will just nicely smooth things out. Although this one doesn't seem to actually do anything, which is quite weird. Oh, wait, it might be because our levels are messing things up a little bit. Or not. Huh. That is strange. Where is this one coming from? So we have this, this, this. Here yeah, we are missing. We are missing one. I have no idea where it's coming from. It's from this one. So that's quite surprising that it just decides to not show. Oh, of course, I need to set the blending mode to art. Sorry, guys. Um, that was a mistake on my end. Of course, set the blending mode to art because else it will only show one piece. So now it will actually not give us anything because we need to add, set the blending mode to art in this one too. Wow, it's been a long day. Sorry. Okay, here we go. So that's more what, that's more like it. Let's lower down the levels back a little bit. Tone, tone it back down a bit because we do not want to have it this strong. There we go. So now we have some nice warping and everything going on. So let's move this back. Now, of course, the warping is still a little bit too perfect. It's perfectly straight and stuff like that. So first of all, let's add a directional warp just to resolve a part of this. And in this directional warp, we want to just set like a nice purling noise, set the scale to be a little bit bigger. And for the direction warp, you just want to move this down, give it like a quite a soft intensity and maybe set the scale even bigger. There we go. And let's copy this one over. And in this one, I want to set another pearly noise. Um, and I'm just going to copy this one. I want for this pearly noise to be the scale a bit, little bit smaller. And I want to set the warping angle somewhere else again. So we are just trying to like kind of mess up the straightness and everything. Now, the next thing is we want to give it a little bit more variation because of course, as you can see, um, some of them are a little bit tilted and everything. Then they're, they're not all perfectly straight. And even though this is something in the background, I still want to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a skew node, a skew node grayscale to be precise. And let's actually add two of them. And let's plug these in. And for one of them, I want to set, uh, let's set the axis to vertical. I want to move this down. And you know what, I probably want to set this into the center. So let's screw this. No, you know what? Let's do top left. Let's screw this down to the bottom. And for the other one, we also want to set this vertical. And we want to screw this one from the top. So now we have like these two screwed versions. 
And actually they are all a bit too strong. So let's set them to zero point zero three. Yeah, zero point zero three. And this one also minus zero point zero three. So now we have like a little bit of skewing going on, which is quite nice. And now if we just throw in a blend in here, plug in both of these skewings in here. And now all we need to do is we need to create like a mask that kind of blends in between the skewings. Now for this mask, um, what you might want to try first is to have a pearly noise that is very big. And once again, throw on like a transform with a stretch of like 2000 or something. There we go. And let's try out the levels just to get a bit more of a strong contrast in here. And let's try out something like this and plug that in here. And there we go. So that gives us a little bit of a skewing. Let's see how here. So that's quite a difference that it gives us. But um, it's not. I just want to make sure that it's not smoothing out the edges a little bit too much. So I'm just going to play around a bit more with my levels and just try to get like a bit of a sharper cut off like this actually let's make it a bit bigger I am looking here at my thumbnail to actually see what is going on there we go okay so now we get like as we, if we switch back and forth, we get a little bit of the skewing going on, which is what I wanted. So now we have like some more of an interesting look to this. Okay, I think that is a good base to start with. Um, of course, after a while, we will need to check this out in Mom's Toolbag. But before we do that, there are a few small things that we want to do. So first, we want to start adding a little bit more of like the stronger streaks in here. Just to really give that little bit of an extra indent. So I'm going to add a blend to this. And I'm going to at the top in empty space add a levels. Then plug in our original one and just really lower down the levels so that it only gives us like a few of those really thick streaks, something like this. Plug this into the top and then set this to subtract and Having the subtract, we just want to kind of like play around with the levels, making everything a little bit strong. So here we go. Now we get like, so these will be in the height map. These will be quite a bit of stronger streaks that are just denting in and everything. I think by this point, it's time to have a look in my set. And after that, um, balancing it out. And then we will start by making like the little knobs and everything. So for this, let's save our scene and I'm just going to load up Marmoset Toolbag for you guys. Okay, so here we are in Marmoset Toolbag. Of course, you can use whatever you want. You can use an engine, you can just preview it in Substance Designer, whatever. Um, in my case, I prefer Marmoset, so that's what we will be using for this tutorial. Now, if you load up a scene, this is like the first thing that you get. So I always like to first change some settings and normally I have a template, but of course for you guys, I will redo this. So if we go down here, I want to always turn on high DPI, which gives us a bit of a more sharper look and everything. I want to turn on my M and occlusion and just set the strength to be around 3.5. The occlusion size to be, to be, to be around 0 0.02 like this. Then in the main camera, we just want to set the sharpening to be around one the bloom to be around 0 0.004 and the vignetting to be around one. And this is just to give us a nice look. And now for the sky, I like to always pick like one of the skies I tend to always pick. And in this case, um, I need to be careful because some of these skies you guys actually do not have. So let's start with um, lens end. I think this one came with you, but you can pick whatever sky you want. So. You can also do overcast hillside, which also comes with um, mid marmoset. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I have a little texture preview cube for you guys that um, I will show you that I will give you. So I will place it into our textures folder in like the very base in here. And I just call it texture cube. 
And if you plug this in, this is basically just a smooth tessellated cube. So it has some nice um, geometry and everything in it. And what we can do with this is, this is just to preview a texture. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go back into Substance Designer and actually export these outputs. So, of course, right now if we export something, nothing happens because they have not been imported in, in here yet. So I am going to plug in this into our height map because this is our height map technically. And I want to add another normal uh, modifier in this. Plug in our height map in here. Set it to be OpenGL because I always work in OpenGL. And just like lower this and lower the intensity to be around 1 or uh, 0 0.6. And plug this into normal. We might not be using it just yet, but it is a good thing to have. And once that's done, let's save our scene and let's export outputs as bitmaps on our wood plank space. And in here, if we just go into our cabin wood and let's make a folder called final. And in here, let's select this folder. Let's set the format to be probably TGA. The reason I picked TGA or TIFF is because they export faster because I want to go back and forth very fast. Now, sometimes TGA gives me some problems with like the um, height map, but um, we'll get to that if we get that problem. So having all of these selected, which is fine, we want to turn on automatic export when outputs change. What this will do is as soon as we make a change in our graph, it will automatically export, meaning that we can just go into Marmoset and immediately see our changes. And I want to press export and done. Now, if we go in here and if we just in here we have wood, we have final, and on our texture, if we just with our material selector go to displacement and turn this onto a height, go in here and throw in our height into the displacement. Now, actually, what I want to do to what I probably want to do, what's just better, is instead of going to displacement and height, because displacement heights will give actual geometry. We might want to go into surface and set this to be parallax and add a parallax height map to this. So parallax height map is pretty much almost like a fake height map. It's a bit, uh, it's quite a bit cheaper than uh, tessellation. Um, and it will of course not show up without a normal map. There we go. So as you can see here, so, and it is just basically a bunch of planes. Um, stacked on top of each other which will give the effect as if that everything is sticking out now for something like this we actually will not have a lot of height because this is just like the base grain so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give this like a super small height maybe something like 0 0.004 to start with and now having that done of course there are a few things i can see first of all this is way too sharp so like this we can just we will now go back and forth and change the stuff so for example here the non-uniform blur remember those we can set this to be 0 0.5 and then if we just go back it will have updated of course this is still a little bit too much so let's do this 0 0.6 and then you and then you can see so like this it just keeps updating back and forth quite a bit now something i'm just going to try so i'm going to try to pick our original blur because it feels like that one is actually, yeah, that one actually already does the trick. So we do not even need <laughs> this entire system, to be honest. So I can just get rid of those. Because um, the original blur already does the trick. It uh, gives us a nice result. It shows us like the skewing and everything. So this is quite nice. This is what I was looking for. And as you can see over here, like the thicker streaks, they are also a little bit sharp. So for those, we might want to like go in here. And in our levels, add a quick blur high quality. And just give the very soft little blur, something like 0 0.2, maybe. There we go. And we want to make it a little bit more stronger. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I am going to probably increase the levels because that's the only way we are able to make it stronger well there are multiple ways but i want to start with this so just give it like a little bit of more of a stronger look there we go so it has like a few streaks now the next thing i see is that those streaks they are not very interesting they are too little 
and um, we only have like four or five. So I probably want to just change my levels just a little bit, give, give it like a little bit more of this. There we go. So now, so uh, this is nice that it instantly updates. So now we have a little bit more of those tweaks. Um, they are also too thick. That's another thing that I find that they are way too thick. So I am probably going to go in and copy this. And one of the levels is going to be like the very thick ones, but I'm just going to scale those down quite a bit. Or you know what? No, I'm going to do this a little bit different because I just do not like the thick ones. I'm going to disconnect this. Okay, and now for these levels, with this level, what I want to achieve is I want to get like the very thick ones that we have over here. And I would just want to have those full opacity. Now we have the little bit of the thinner ones that are sitting in between here, which are looking quite nice. And I'm just going to make those a little bit stronger, something like this. So now we have those little ones. And now if you add a blur to this, a blur, a blend to this, plug in our big ones in the top and our little ones here at the bottom, and then just set the blending mode to be subtract. What this will do is it will just subtract those really thick lines. And if once we plug this into our blur and have this over here, it will show us um, almost what I want. So I do not want to have like this little outline over here that we that is left over. And a way that we can fix this is to simply add a quick blur high quality to this. Set quality to one, intensity very low, something like 0 0.6. And then add another levels on this and then move the white slide of the levels up. What this will do is it will increase, of course, the mass size, which will mean that it will really just blend out whatever is there. And as you can see now that it has blended out, now we only have like those little pieces here. And once that's done, it's just a matter of balancing it out a little bit. So let's have a look and see if we can get our smaller lines a little bit stronger, stuff like that. I just go back and forth, so that's a bit too strong. So I, I think it's best if we look into our like into our final view and in here just have a look and see. Here we go. So that has like some small streaks and everything. I do not really like the ones that are, like the little dots in here. They, they, I do like a few of them, but I think they are a little bit too over the top. So I might just want to lower that. Um, let's try that. Hmm. Yeah, it's not yet what I'm looking for. It's also not sharp enough. It just shows some flat parts over here and there. Which is not really what I want. You know what, maybe it is better in this case to actually make this a little bit more custom so that we, instead of doing this, we just make our own separate streaks. So let's start with that.